Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. Okay, so recently there's been a bit of a controversy around a video published by Jay over at Jay's Two Cents. I kind of got in the middle of it when I pointed out in a YouTube comment that it looked like Jay was basing his entire third gen Ryzen platform evaluation on the use of a pre-production motherboard. Now, I'm not blaming Jay for that. He really wasn't to know. And just let me make this crystal clear at the start of the video. The point of this video isn't to call out Jay or create any more drama. We just want to understand what's going on and provide you with the facts. I'm just going to jump in a bit awkwardly here after I'd completely finished this video as I was uploading it. Uh, Jay released a video correcting the record, explaining what happened uh, from his side of things. It's a very good video. Uh, he's done a great job with it. And yeah, a lot of respect to Jay for making that video. Anyway, since I've made my video, and as I said, it wasn't a video to attack Jay or create any more drama around this bloody issue, I just wanted to clear things up. Uh, and yeah, so since I've made my video, I might as well just release it anyway. So I just thought I'd add this bit in to say, look, I'm gonna put a link to Jay's video in the description. Go check that out. Again, a lot of respect to Jay for correcting the record on this one. And I guess I'll just play my video now. So firstly, identifying the pre-production board is pretty simple. On the underside of the board, you'll find one or two diagnostic headers, which have been removed for the retail version. Unfortunately, MSI never actually told us that the Godlight board provided in the AMD review kit wasn't the final retail version. In fact, it wasn't until I quizzed them about the diagnostic headers that they confirmed these weren't retail boards. This is extremely frustrating as MSI knew there were issues with the early revision and that these issues had been addressed with the retail version. I should also note that MSI has informed us that all godlike motherboards included by AMD in the review kit were pre-production models. There's no exceptions here. The retail models just weren't ready in time. It's extremely rare this happens. In fact, I can't recall the last time I was sent a pre-production product that physically differed from the retail model. So there's really no way Jay would have expected MSI to do this, especially without notifying him first. So again, not Jay's fault. So I've now acquired a retail version of the Godlike to compare directly with the pre-production model included in our third gen Ryzen review kit. Just to make sure that A, there is actually a physical difference between the boards and B, the stability issues with the ABBA BIOS have indeed been addressed. When compared to the review board, the retail version, according to MSI, features a number of changes. These changes include improving CPU OC schematic, revised silk printing on the PCB, changes to the external clock generator, improved reset command, improved wake up on LAN function, and most important of all, at least for dealing with these stability issues, is the addition of a 10K resistor. MSI says the 10K resistor has been included to improve CPU compatibility and stability. It's my understanding that a current limiting resistor is commonly used on electric circuits to protect their inputs and sometimes their outputs. I believe the idea is that for low current levels, the current limiting resistor introduces very low voltage drop across it. However, for larger currents, the limiting resistor serves to protect the input by introducing an external voltage drop, as well as limiting the amount of current allowed to flow into or out of the electronic circuit or device. And a very commonly used value for such a resistor is 10,000 ohms. MSI says this is the cause for the post issues that Jay was suffering when using the ABBA BIOS version on the pre-production board and that they were able to replicate the problem through their own in-house testing. Apparently AMD made some late changes to the way the CPUs work and this required a few board changes that weren't implemented in time for the version sent to reviewers. MSI wouldn't tell us the exact location of the 10K resistor and asked that we not show it, which is a bit annoying. But by comparing the board side by side, we can see there are a number of physical changes. We're not showing anything here. A competitor can't easily find out for themselves. And frankly, we have every right to show these boards. So we are. Oddly though, most of the changes we spotted saw components removed from the retail model, not added. Of course, it's possible for resistor values to be changed. So we can't read too much into this. And I haven't been able to comb over every square inch of the board. Now I've updated both the retail and pre-production boards to the ABBA BIOS version and so far both have worked flawlessly. I've not had a single issue and I'm using G-Skills Flarex memory uh, with the Cooler Master V650 power supply and then for cooling I'm using the Corsair H115i Pro. MSI were pretty confident that I run into the same post issues with the pre-production board using the ABBA BIOS but so far so good. After letting them know of my success, they informed me that some pre-production boards are better than others, 
but eventually all will fall victim to the post issue. Apparently the better boards like mine require around 200 power cycles before the post issue rears its ugly head. I've only done a few dozen at this point, so I'll update you if anything changes. MSI has let me know that a few other reviewers have also been able to replicate the problem with the pre-production board, but so far I've not heard reports from a reliable source that this issue still persists with the retail version. The addition of the 10k ohm resistor coupled with the 200 power cycles suggests to me that the previous design was right on the threshold of standard input performance. The 200 power cycles is probably sufficient to heat the silicon of the IC, altering the threshold of the input. This is all pure speculation, but this could be why MSI was forced to make the alteration to improve stability. Anyway, since both boards are working, I decided to run a few multi and single core Cinebench runs to see if they differed at all. The multi-core performance was pretty much the same on both boards, and the performance is where you'd expect it to be with a stock 3900X, so a score of a little over 7,000 points. Oddly though, the single core performance was pretty weak on the retail board, compared to what we've recently seen using budget ASUS and Gigabyte retail boards, those boards scored around 515 points. The Godlight retail board maxed out at just 500 points, while the pre-production board was more in line with the other boards tested at 512 points and this data is based on a three run average. I even stuck the retail board twice just to make sure there wasn't some kind of issue the first time around, but the results were the same. So it looks like MSI might have a little bit of optimization work to do here in order to get up to speed with their competitors. That said, we are only talking about a 3% reduction in single core performance, so that'll be hard to spot in gaming benchmarks, for example. I should also note that the only change made here for this testing was the board itself. I'm using the same CPU, cooler, storage, power supply, graphics card, and so on. It's possible other retail boards will score around 510 to 515 points. We're pretty close to where the board should be, even at 500 points, so for now I wouldn't read too much into this. Before moving on, I'll just note that the maximum reported core voltage is 1.5 volt. But crucially, you'll notice that for all core workloads, that figure drops down to just 1.2 volts, and that's all the CPU requires to maintain the all-core frequency. Please note that the max voltages are reported when the CPU isn't under heavy load, and crucially, they are within the AMD spec. So we're only seeing a peak operating temperature of around 70 degrees, which is normal for a stock 3900X using an all-in-one liquid cooler. With the box cooler, we found you're looking at temperatures more up around 80 degrees in a 21 degree room, and again, this is normal and other reviewers have reported similar figures in their day one reviews using a whole range of different motherboards. So there's not much more testing we really need to do at this point. I mean, apart from power cycle the board a couple of hundred times to see if we can get it to fail. But yeah, so far our pre-production board hasn't run into the issues with the ABBA BIOS. So, so far so good as I said. I know Gavin from Anantec will be checking out their retail Godlight boards soon with the latest BIOS update. So we should get some interesting additional information there. And I'd just like to make it really clear that I'm not trying to clear MSI's name here. If there are issues with their AM4 motherboards, well, they need to fix them. The takeaway from this content is that reviewers were indeed sent pre-production motherboards. They are physically different to the retail boards, and MSI has told us that the post issue is solely down to a missing 10K resistor. There's still a few things I'd like to tackle here though, so before wrapping this video up, I'll do my best to cover them all. Firstly, I don't have an issue with MSI sending reviewers pre-production boards for day one reviews, as long as the performance is in line with the final product. If there are a few compatibility or stability issues, that's not exactly ideal, but upon initial review, the board was fine. And actually to date, I haven't run into any problems, as I said, so there's nothing to report yet. Still, where MSI has really messed up here was first, not informing reviewers that they had a pre-production board, and then once the retail version was ready, not swapping the pre-production board with a retail version. So that was their second mistake. Had they done that, this entire mess may have been avoided. Having said that, I'm not at all trying to suggest that the third gen Ryzen launch has gone off without a hitch. It's certainly had its fair share of issues, and sadly, due to budget limitations, the AMD community really are the beta testers, at least for the first few months. This is something that will become less and less acceptable as AMD claw back market share, so I strongly suggest they start ramping up their investment when it comes to software development and testing of their hardware. 
Also, for those of you who believe we're defending AMD too much here, I'd also like to point out that we've made similar content in the past, correcting the record for both Intel and Nvidia. For example, AMD fanboys claimed that the Core i5-8400 wasn't as good as reviewers were saying it was because it allegedly throttled using the box cooler and reviewers tested using an aftermarket cooler. Well, I did the testing with the box cooler and proved that the 8400 didn't throttle at all. Then there were claims that most 8700K processors couldn't overclock to 5 GHz. Again, we proved that that simply wasn't true by testing 10 retail chips. More recently, I defended the RTX 2060's use of a 6 GB VRAM buffer. And sure, the more limited 6 GB capacity isn't ideal, but it's far from the disaster that many were making it out to be. And we made a dedicated video covering the topic. There's plenty more examples, but there's just a few of them. So yes, we've covered a lot of AMD related products and topics over the past few months and guess what? There's been a heap of exciting new AMD products and you guys have wanted to see us cover them. Anyway, wrapping this up, overall I found with the latest ABBA update all the X570 motherboards that we've tested so far have worked exceptionally well with no issues. That's of course not to say there aren't any issues, I'm yet to really test out the 300 and 400 series boards. But I think overall the platform is in pretty good shape at the moment and I'm certainly getting that kind of feedback from our Patreon members, whereas that wasn't the case just a few weeks ago. Anyway, that is going to do it for this one. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe, you can do the like thing, and if you appreciate the work we do at Hire Unboxed and you want to get more involved with the channel, then consider joining us over at Patreon. I'm your host Steve, see you again next time. <laughs>